Hi, this is Sneaky from Cloud9, and this is my basic champion guide to Kog'Maw. So, for solo queue, I think uh, Kog'Maw is pretty good in general. He has super high range, and just probably the most damage out of any AD carry. Um, but the downside, obviously, is that he's immobile. You can get caught up pretty easily. As long as, I think, the, as long as the top champs are banned, as long as those guys are out of the picture, I think he should be okay with Kog'Ma. Even Jarvan's okay to play against. Like, yeah, he'll probably ult you in, but you can zone a lot of people with your abilities and just deal tons of damage. Past that, for solo Q, I do think he is a top pick right now just because of how much damage he deals and how much range he has. The, the range lets him play safe and the fact that People probably can't actually reach you just because you have such high range. And not even just through your auto attacks, it's through your ulti as well. You can throw your E and your ulti out at someone, and maybe they'll try and run at you, but you just run away because you don't actually be, have to be in range, and they're trying to go through your slow. So he's pretty good for Zulq. So landing face for Kogma is... It's okay. Uh, it kind of depends on who you're playing against. Uh, for the most part, you'll want to sustain support with Kog'Maw. Uh, if you have someone that's all in, it it can work. But Kog'Maw just wants to only really go in when, when his W is up. And you can kind of control that a lot easier when you have a sustained support. Um, but past that, just thinking about his power spikes in laning phase... Uh, his biggest one is obviously at 6, where he gets his ulti and he just throws him on uh, 40 mana cooldowns. But he doesn't really get much of a power spike uh, past that. I guess level 2, but everyone else gets a good power spike then. The, the reason for that is is that he maxes his W, and that means that he's only going to get higher percentage damage and higher range, which is nice, but it's not really a power spike in itself. I would, I would really only say the Power Spike is at 6, and you 100% get that during laning phase, and it'll 100% net you uh, lots of poke down or kills, because I think he outtrades anyone at 6. Obviously, there's people who can burst you, but they'll need the support to go in with that, as long as you're not walking in range immediately before throwing out any ultis and not hitting them. You should be fine to uh, win any duel against anyone in the game for 80 carries. Maybe, maybe not Urgot, though. Urgot's pretty broken for dueling. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's a good laner. So, the way you teamfight on Kog'Ma is relatively uh, simple, I guess. The reason being is that before the teamfight happens, you'll want to be poking down uh, people with your ulti. So, you'll likely want to be 11 before you start doing this, because level 6 ulti range is kind of low, and it'll put you in a bad position. Whereas... Level 11 and 16 are ridiculous range. So, uh, wait for 11, I think, to try and do this. But poke them down before the fight happens, and then they'll likely just be lower life, and then maybe someone will jump at you during that. Uh, just run backwards. Uh, if you have Bork, obviously you can Bork them if you want, if you're low enough. Uh, but for the most part, past poking them before the fight even starts, you'll want to... Uh, Follow up with any sort of wombo that your team starts to say Oriani ultis. Throw out your E to combo. It'll slow them and they'll get destroyed even more. And also throw out ultis whenever you can. Try not to go above, uh, I think it's 160 mana. Yeah, try not to go 100, above 160 mana for your ulti. Uh, you'll just be wasting at that point. And even if it, I think even if it gets you a kill, unless it's like one of the last people alive and you can definitely clean up everyone else. It, it's probably not worth it, just because you'll be completely oom after that. And if you want ulti again, you just actually can't. So you you want to make sure you're not spamming your ulti too hard in team fights. Uh, for targets to hit, though, you'll want to just shred whoever's in front of you. Uh, you can't really go past anyone. Obviously, you can ulti people to follow up, but it'll be hard to look for that if you're getting focused by a, uh, a bruiser or someone. Um, but obviously, if you can, if there's a uh, AD carry or mid later getting CC, just try and, try and throw down your ulti to follow up because you do have really high range. 
Uh, but yeah, just shred frontline, look for ulties. So a uh, a pretty big tip that, for Kagma that took me a while to learn is the second you hit six, uh, you'll want to try and land as many ulties as possible. Obviously, that's like a kind of generic tip, but uh, the way you want to do this is watch and wait for them to start last hitting, and then just study their movement patterns like afterwards. Uh, when they go in for the last hit, you'll likely want to throw out an ulti, but if they know you're trying to go for it, they'll try and dodge. So just see which way they dodge most of the time, and then predict that. They'll, almost all the time when people are dodging, it's in a pattern. It's never just, oh, it's not never, it's not only never, but for the most part, it is a pattern, and then sometimes people will dodge reactionary if they can read it quickly. Uh, but past that, that means that you'll be able to, if you can read them correctly, you can hit all your ulties and poke them down super hard. Uh, so when you are ulting in lane, you never want to go past 40. The only way you'd want to go past 40 is if you 100% need to. and Or also, if it's going to be a guaranteed hit. If it's not a guaranteed hit, don't go for it, because... That means that you'll just be wasting more mana, and that your one after that will be 120 mana, which means that it's like almost uncastable for the the even next one. So you'll just run out of mana immediately if you're casting them way too often. Uh, so just try and manage your uh, ulti cooldown. Even though it's like a one, two second cooldown, it actually has a longer cooldown than that. Just be aware of it. So, Kog'Maw's runes are the same as every other AD carries. It's just 14% attack speed, which means 3 uh, attack speed quints, then 9 AD reds, 9 armor yellows, and 9 MR blues. Um, this is just the best page for AD carries right now, and I don't think it will change unless runes change. Uh, attack speed is the most efficient quint, and it also feels really nice. Uh, it, it helps you last hit. It helps you do the most damage possible. Uh, especially for Kog'Maw. If you think about it, during his W, he'll want to auto-attack as many times as possible. But it also works for literally every other AD carry. So attack speed is the way to go. So the mastery page is 21 offense, 9 defense. It's the same thing I run on a few other AD carries. I use this page uh, for... Caster-ish AD carries, so like Lucian, uh, I would do it with Varus, Corky, people like that, because he can easily proc the blade weaving part, where if you hit a spell, it increases your auto attack damage. Um, past that, it's pretty normal. There's no points in Warlord, one point in Frenzy. Uh, not much else to say, it's just the normal mastery page that I use with a point in blade weaving. So, for skill order on Kogma, uh, you start level 1 with W, because you'll just have super high range and be able to harass people and actually do something, level 1. Whereas, your E, it's it's okay for team fights because it slows and damages everyone, but you'll just be so short range that you probably won't be able to do anything else. Uh, Q is pretty bad, level 1 as well, just attacks me an increase and a very small amount of damage. Uh, not very significant. So, start with W level 1. Uh, level 2, I actually change up a lot between Q and E. Uh, I feel as if level 2, if I'm going for an all-in, I think E is better. Or if there's someone that's constantly harassing me, or if I need to play back, I get E as well. Uh, but past that, if I don't think we're going to go for an all-in, I think we're just farming. Uh, I don't have to play back for the most part. I get two, or I get Q too. Uh, for the most part, I think it is really good because it helps with last hitting. It costs less mana. It helps in last hitting two ways, actually. It gives you passive attack speed, and it gives you an active to hit creeps that you maybe would would have missed without it. Instead of throwing out your E to blast the entire wave and push it, it'll just hit one and finish it off for you. So, level two, key read, depending on the situation. Um, level three... You get the other one that you didn't get. So if you got E, you get Q. If you got Q, you get E. Make sure you have all three of your abilities by now. Uh, past that, you're just maxing your your W to up until level nine, and then 
the second ability you want to max is E because of the fact that it increases the slow by so much and the damage. It helps with wave clear. It helps with uh, just being able to catch people out. So like a good combo is just you know throwing out your E and then throwing out an ulti, and they won't really be able to dodge it. And you can only achieve this by actually maxing your E. If, you, if it's super low points, you're not going to be doing that much of it. Uh, past that, you'll just max out your Q. Uh, after your E and you know your ulti whenever you can. So my, my auto build for Kogma is uh, pretty stable right now. I think I have it down. It it's just uh, your first item is going to be Training Force after Dorn's blade, obviously. Um, and the way you'll want to build it is you'll most likely want to go back for Phage first and then go into your Charlie Shane. Never buy Zeal. Uh, until it's third item out of the three. Uh, but there are some scenarios where you do want to try the sheen first. I think the, the the main point would be if you can also get uh, parts of the phage, so most likely the health part, the ruby crystal, because the main point of the phage is to increase your survivability through health and move speed, but also gives you damage. Uh, so... If you can just get some of that survivability with the health, it should be okay to get that if you have 1,600 gold. Uh, that is one of the better buys for Trinity Force. Uh, so once you finally do have your Trinity Force, you get a huge power spike. Um, and your next item will probably be Tier 2 Boots. Uh, it just makes you be able to run around, the map, run around the map as much as you want. And at that point, you should be running around the map a lot. Uh, catching waves, going to your team, stuff like that. Uh, but your second item pass boost is going to be Blade the Rune King. Uh, this is a really good item for Kogma. Lots of damage, survivability, uh, percentage, percentage health shred, which works well with your passive, or uh, your W passive active thing. So past that, you'll want to go for um, either PD or IE. You, don't, you do not want to build... Lots of spirit on this champion. Uh, he does a lot of magic damage and lots of shred. So the way it, it scales a lot better if you don't kill lots of spirit because you can get either more attack speed or just more flat out damage. Uh, I think it kind of depends on two things. For if you want IE or PD next, it is if they don't have armor, you're gonna want to go IE because you'll just shred them even quicker with an IE uh, training force spork. You'll be doing lots of damage to them with IE. Whereas PD, you'll attack faster, but you'll shred their life quicker with your percentage, your double percentage. So you'll likely want to go PD if they don't if they do have a lot of armor and health. So IE third otherwise. Uh past that you just build the other one that you didn't build. Uh PD or IE, whichever one you did not get yet. And then and then at this point, it's kind of uh game dependent. There's a few options here. You can get VT for even more survivability. You can get Mercurial Scimitar for damage and survivability. You can get Banshee's Fill. Whatever you think is going to be best. Uh, whatever you need to block. If, you, if there's a Vi, you probably want Banshee's. If there's a um, Annie, you probably want Banshee's. If there's a Zed, you probably want Mercurial. Just stuff like that. Thank you for watching. Make sure to check out my other guide, guides at lawclass.com. Basically the same as Old Ash. Nothing really changed much about that, but uh, I would say she has more uh, slowing potential. The way jump, wall jumping on Callisto works is you throw your spear forward and you jump forward. Uh, even though when you...